Hello and welcome back to the channel. I'm going to be sharing a video clip with you from this fellow on the screen here. Uh, he is a biracial man and his words are very, very clear on how he feels about situations in the black community. Uh, he feels that he's earned a right to say what he says because he is uh, the result of a black male relationship with um, a non-black woman. Okay, and uh, he talks about how uh, black men come for him because of his stance on what he sees in the black community. So uh, he talks about how he's been a target of attack by black men because of how he feels and how he views things. Uh, what is it about people who think that uh, if you are not a part of, of a particular group, you have no right to speak on the issues of that group. More specifically, um, I've seen a lot of black men even come for me because I am a woman. They feel that I have no right to speak on issues that concern black men, even if it's a black man who has done something to a black woman and I am sending out um, an SOS or alert or a warning to black women saying, look, be careful, do this, do that. They feel like you can only talk about the part where you can uh, warn women, but you can't warn, tell them who you're warning them for. You can't say anything about who has done what, what do, what do they need to pay attention to? What do they need to look out for? If it involves a black man, you are not allowed to speak on that part of the story. Anyway, take a listen at what this guy has to say. You'll find it very interesting. Of course, I will be right back. Hey, what's cracking? It's your angry biracial. So look, I'm sitting here at my kid's school waiting to pick him up. I was reading through some of the comments and black men ain't they feel feels. <laughs> we have a, uh, a racially ambiguous biracial man like myself um, gets on here and starts uplifting black women I become a target of attack by black men they say oh you, you ain't really black well stay in your lane we're talking about black issues one black man said oh I agree with you saying but you're not black so you can't talk about it I'm like yes I can talk about the fuckery of black men because I came from a black man who did that same fuckery I came from a black man who I never met I came from a black man who abandoned his seed I came from a black man who who was hoeing around, who was a piece of crap. So yes, I'm gonna talk about it because it needs to be talked about, you know? It needs to be talked about. And one thing I find interesting about these passport bros, right? It would be one thing if, 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 if they were just, you know, if the black community was fine and it, it, it was having issues that they created. And they said, I'm gonna travel abroad and go, go, go do what I do. Cause like you don't see white men saying, you know, I, I'm gonna go over here because you know, w w w w white women are trash. You, 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 don't, you don't see Asian men say, I'm going to go over here because a a Asian women are trash. You don't see Hispanic men say, I'm going to go over here. No. Black men is the only group of men that are doing that. You know? And it's like, it's the lack of accountability that a lot of people see it. And like, like, what are you doing? Black men destroyed the black community. Black men like my father went around and created a whole bunch of bastard kids with a whole bunch of a black woman. Sold these black women a dream, got them barefoot and pregnant and left their ass. You know, left their ass to, to take care of his abandoned seed, take care of his bastard kids. And I'm a bastard kid of a black man who did that exact same thing. You know, my father has like 20, 30 kids. He was sleeping around everywhere, creating broken homes and bastard kids. And, and I, I've met a few of them, right? And a lot of them are in a bad position. You know, I'm, I think I'm one of the few that, that's doing something with my life. Most of them, are, some are in prison right now. Some are homeless. Some are on drugs. Some have, some, there's just a lot of things going on with them, right? And that's the type of stuff that black men create. And I, I know a lot of black men say, well, she, 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 she opened her legs. Yeah, of course she did. You sold her a dream. You convinced her to. And then left. Left them to take care uh, of a child that they didn't know how to take care of. Left them to do your job and her job. And then you want to leave again and go overseas and not clean up the mess you made.
Okay, so clearly everything this man has said speaks for itself. Everything he has said speaks for itself. Can anyone point out one lie that was told in his video? Anyone? Can anyone point out one lie? Even if you look at the caption, it says the modern black women are the result of black men's infidelity. So a lot would, uh, would disagree with that. They want to they want to believe that the modern black women or woman is the way that she is all of her own doing and has nothing to do with how black men have been over the past few decades. It kind of reminds me, again, I always like to draw this uh, correlation how so-called white people, they have been a certain way towards black people, right? They've been a certain way. They've cast stumbling blocks and they've done this and they've done that. And now the result is a particular black person that uh, has a particular way about them that has been shaped by the very policies and treatments that they've received from white people, right? But the same can be said about black men. Black women today are the creation of the problems and issues stirred up, issues stirred up in the black community by black men that started decades ago. All kinds of behaviors, treatments, and things. We've talked about uh, the super freak thing where uh, black men were going after uh, Caucasian women back in the late 60s, early 70s, even probably before that. But it played out in the music. Well, men like Rick James, they made it very clear that the type that they wanted was the kind that you don't bring home to mama, right? And there was this thing of uh, black men saying that black women were too much in the missionary position and that they, these other women would give them more pleasure in bed. And this is why they chose them. They made it really known back then, but in today's time, that's not a popular statement to make. So now they're trying to say, oh, we go after these other women because they're more submissive and black women are just straight trash. But what they forget is that we live on the same planet. So we know how the story played out and we know how it got to where it is. And so this young man right here, the biracial man, um, I believe his um, TikTok handle is... Um, angry biracial. Let me just double check that. Yep. Angry biracial. And so they are upset at him because he just spilled the beans on the truth that most already knew. A lot of people already knew that Papa was a rolling stone. Wherever he laid his hat was his home. A lot of folk already knew that. But there's this pretense today among some so-called black men, not all, that the black woman is the problem. And this is why they are venturing out. Because notice this guy did mention the Passport Brothers. Passport Brothers want to pretend like they are just so righteous and wholesome. This guy is talking about how you planted your seed all over in the communities where you are. Then you want to take yourself over to another country and pretend like you're trying to flee something terrible in America that was put on you by black women. And so you got to go find a better woman to replace the black women that you left behind. It's unfortunate that many so-called black men, not all, but many have left a trail of tears behind them as well. A trail of tears of women and babies and children crying. This young man, uh, angry biracial, he talked about how he never even met his father. But he's met some of his um, other biracial siblings whose lives are messed up because that man deposited his sperm into some woman and to many women from what he's saying and created children and kept it moving. It's too many doing this, but then got the nerve to get online and pretend to be high value while putting down black women, calling them low value or no value, coining them with a statement, modern women that came from or that was popularized by Kevin Samuels as if there's not a modern man counterpart to that. We're going to talk about that modern man one day because the modern man today has that Judah hypocrisy that was historically there from our ancestors. It is still there. So not only are these modern so-called black men creating and wreaking havoc in the black community, 
by making children who have no fathers in their lives. But as you see from this man's own testimony, his father used a number of women as sperm dubs to create children that he had no parts in their life. He was just a depositor of sperm and kept it moving. This was not the legacy that the men of Judah were supposed to have. But this is what they have created and then got the nerve to be online trying to pretend like the black community is out of whack solely on the back of black women who don't make babies by themselves. Like this man said here, they will make these mixed babies and then they will go as he referred to them as bastard children, he, they will go and deal with them. But in his case, his father didn't even deal with him. But I know of cases personally where there were black children involved with black women. They left those children and they went to play daddy to quote unquote what this man refers to as bastard children. And you take some kind of pride in that. Many years ago, we shared um, a situation. We had a rental property. Well, we had several rental properties, but one property we had, um, it was a two flat, <clears throat> a two family flat. And I remember um, there was a guy who called up. Uh, he wanted to rent a place. He said he wanted, needed to rent a place for someone, right? So we meet him. He was a professional black guy with a suit and tie, really nice vehicle, everything, right? And uh, he explains the situation to us. He says he has a tenant that um, uh, needs a place to stay because they're doing whatever, whatever with, with the house that she's staying in now, which belonged to him and his wife, okay? Just so happens that the tenant that he was trying to relocate to our property was a white female. And so he didn't tell all of the details to us, but when she got there, and she was actually living there. She had a mixed son. We didn't put two and two together. She actually was the one who told us the whole story. She explained to us that um, she had a child with her former landlord. She explained that to us. And that his wife wanted her out of their place. But let me tell you how this story goes. This this is a trip. This is why this guy has a right to speak on this, okay? He has a right because he is the result of a black man who was tipping and dipping, okay? He has a right to speak on this. But um, anyway, this young lady's name was Michelle. I don't remember her last name, but <clears throat> when she was explaining the story to us, she sounded proud of her doings and his doings. And from time to time when we would be working on the other units, she had uh, moved in. And I find it interesting that this guy in his fine car, once she spilled the beans, he would begin to show up. And we were like, oh, uh, Michelle told us that you are her baby's father. And this is when he begins to open up more about things concerning their situation. So as the story goes, one day his tenant didn't have her rent. And so since she couldn't pay him with cash, she paid him with something else. Nine months later, the result was a baby boy. Now, of course, it's very clear that it didn't stop there. But these are the situations that these men allow themselves to get into. And so as the story goes, his, his wife um, had a really prominent position at a hospital in Detroit. He would sometimes allow his tenant, which was also now his baby mama, he would allow her to go to his wife's job, pick up her car, run errands for her and the baby while his wife was at work not knowing that her car was even touched. His wife's job was so prominent that she had a designated parking spot. So you see that this couple had some money. They had some money. The guy was riding around in a, in a BMW or a, a Lexus or some, some type of really um, expensive vehicle at the time. But he thought it was okay that 
he allowed himself to get this wrapped up, tied up and tangled up with that woman to where he put his own marriage on the line. When his wife got wind of it, she said she got to go. But one thing that we noted, when he would come around, when this man would come around, he would pick up his biracial child with such pride. Keep in mind, he's married to that black woman, but he's messing around with this white woman, but he would carry the black, I'm sorry, the, the mixed child around with such pride. And it was unbelievable to us that he would have the audacity to be strutting around like he did something, did him own, his own self proud. Now, I'm not trying to be mean when I say this, but the white woman that he had this child with, she looked like she was about, she was very short. I would say about uh, four foot eight or something like that. And she was very plump. Okay. She was heavy. So you can get that image in your mind, very short and very thick and heavy. But yet he had the nerve to walk around in pride, not realizing that he violated all kinds of natural and spiritual laws. See, some of you all are uncomfortable with these kind of conversations. Some of y'all are uncomfortable with it, but the truth is what it is. This guy on the screen, he referred to himself as a bastard child that his father created. I don't know if he knows that the Bible talks about this, but apparently he does. I don't know. It could be that he's just referring to himself as that for other reasons. But that is biblically sound. That is what it's referred to when the tribes of Judah have children with women outside of the 12 tribes. Now, I have to bring this part in here in case this fella ever sees this video. The scripture does say that the children that are born of unlawful unions can take hold of the covenant and serve the Most High Yah. It does say that. It's referring to the children. It does not give you permission to go out and do this as a man or a woman to go out and get yourself involved in this type of situation. It's just providing an out for the children that are born of these situations that if they want to serve the Most High, that they can take hold of the covenant. That's why I wanted to mention this. But some black men will use that as an occasion. Say, see, see, we could do this. No, uh, how, how can you say that you can do this when it was biblically forbidden to do it? Just because the Most High says that I'm going to provide a way of escape for the children that are born of these situations doesn't give you permission to go and do these things. You see how people twist the scripture all up to do what they want to do for their own sexual lustful desires. So again, I appreciate the video that this, this dude put out. He has several. Okay. And even telling the truth that modern black women are really the creation of what the black man has done in the black community. But yet there's this pretense online, like we're that like that like they feel like they are just the innocent victims of circumstances of all oh, these terrible, horrible women. One thing he said too, and I noted this, he says you don't see Asian men and white men and all these other racial groups doing this to their women. That's a point that I made many years ago. Only black men are all up and down these internet streets talking about how much they despise their own women. And of course, you know, I'm not talking about all black men, but there are channels dedicated to it, dedicated to it. And even telling men, encouraging them to go date someone from another race. After you created this mess in your own community, you're encouraging black men who help you create it to go and create families and other communities because black women are just not worth it. You create this horror story and then you abandon ship like you're some innocent bystander mm, mm, mm. but again as this young man noted he says you don't see Asian men and white men and men of other races online saying that their women are the reason why their communities are in shambles 
That's something that only happens in the black community. And that is a shame before the Most High Yah. We as a people better repent of this foolishness. The whole world is watching. This is why the Most High allows his judgment to touch down so frequently and so often in the black community. This is why. Because the head refuses to repent, but continues to point the finger in every other direction but the man in the mirror. I am done with this video. Say what you must in the comment section. Of course, I already know that some people are going to say this, that, and the third. For all of you brothers who keep saying that this is why women aren't allowed to teach. Look, I'm on YouTube. And listen, that was never in the Torah. That's just your go-to statement when somebody's telling the truth that you don't want to hear. Even the young man on the screen here says that you come for him because of what he says about black women in defense of black women. You tell him that he has no right to speak on these issues because he's not fully black. I mean, what kind of excuse can you throw at everything because you don't want no... It sounds just, again, it sounds just like the so-called... Um, European nations who feel like we shouldn't talk about black history. It's almost like a reaping what we sow as a, as a people because our head won't acknowledge the wrong that the head does. Now these other nations who the Most High has put over us, they don't want to acknowledge what they have done. It's like it's coming back full circle. Think about what I'm saying, y'all. Think about what I'm saying. Our head don't want to acknowledge that they are the reason why the black community is in shambles. And so these people that the Most High has said, I'm going to put them over you as a rod of correction. They don't want to acknowledge that they've done anything wrong either. Like a reaping what you sow. Y'all get what I'm saying? Judah has always wanted to point in the other direction. With our four, <clears throat> one of our four relatives, Tamar, Judah got this woman pregnant thousands of years ago. I'm talking about her ancestors, got her pregnant and then wanted to stone her until he found out she was, he was the man that she got pregnant by when he was creeping in the night. Y'all remember that? He was the one who dropped his seed in her, but because he didn't realize that she was coming back to tell the story and that she had some of his belongings that he had been looking for. She was like, remember that night? Here's your belongings. And then he had to say, oh man, you have been more righteous than I. Yeah, she was. She was trying to carry on your seed because her, your sons had died. So she was trying to do something righteous. At least the scripture counted it for righteousness. But him, he wanted to stone her until he found out he was the daddy. Ain't that something? And even the story about the woman who was overtaken in adultery, the men brought her to be stoned. They said, look who we caught. We caught this woman in the very act of adultery. We must stone her. And Yahushua said, he that is without sin cast the first stone. But notice in that situation, and we've brought this out before, they only brought the woman. They said they caught her in adultery, right? So she wasn't having it by herself. Why did they not bring the man who was on the other side of that adultery? That is the hypocrisy of the tribe of Judah. And that's what you see happening today with the men pointing at the women, pointing at the children, but not looking at the one in the mirror. But statistically speaking, the Most High has poured that judgment out to where the racial demographic of men, black men versus white men and other men, is so different when you compare it to their women. They were showing that 50 is like 50, 50 with black um, with white men and white women in terms of um, population. But with black men and black women, black men have been dying off so frequently that there's a huge gap in the population of black men versus the population of black women and that huge gap is so notable that even the scripture talks about it being seven women to one man that is the judgment of Yah but of course many of these men don't want to acknowledge what is so very clear and obvious that there is a judgment on them that the Most High has judged the head and let me go ahead and say this. This does not mean that he's not judging women too, but there is more responsibility put on those who were commissioned to be the head. 
he did not give that position to the black woman. It was given to the black man. The black man is supposed to be the head, but instead he is a rolling stone, dropping his seed wherever he lays his hat and calls his home. Too many people have that same story. Too many people share this story that this man right here shares. And of course, we know that there are always going to be the righteous men who are handling their business, raising their children, loving their families, taking care of their responsibilities. We know that there will always be those, but that does not mean that we don't talk about the problems. Just because you have a group of men who are handling their business does not mean that you stay silent on those who are increasing the sins of our people. Increasing the sins. That's what the Bible calls it increasing the sins of our people. Anyway, I'm done with this video. Say what you must in the comment section. As always, keep it tight and keep it right. But until next time, I'm out.